Hey, Bayek, it's me, Ian. And in today's video, we're going to do this. Yes, it's Dracula, the Prince of Darkness from 1966. Yes, another Hammer classic. Who can resist these Hammer classics? Oh, yes, this. Well, this is really a direct sequel to the first Dracula film. Um, of 1958 so um, it's it's interesting to compare the two and how they are adapted and how they brought Dracula back and it's 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 just an, another brilliant take on the Dracula story by Hammer as usual and of course this is directed by Terence Fisher once again. Those capable hands. Brilliant. He's such a brilliant director. I've talked about him nearly every week when he's when I review one of these films, but he's he's just just brilliant. Anyhow, let's get into it. It's 90 minutes long, standard um time for a a film like Hammer did, that was about their standard time. Um, looking at Rotten Tomatoes, it's got 81%. In other words, the critics did generally see now, I think more in retrospect, they, they liked it. Um, the public actually loved it. I don't want to talk about it. Um, and I think it's seen as a real return to form to some extent. Um emulating what had happened and, and also it was a big gamble as a, I've talked about this before that they'd signed this deal where they made four films back to back and it's on a double bill and the, the other film is of course the brilliant The Plague of the Zombies which is just absolutely brilliant um, but of course a lot of people still then were looking down on it and um yeah um the critics always are like that as i said but uh now it's seen definitely a lot more favorably um again the the censorship problems are interesting the way that some um some of them were very cleverly done i think that to give it that more X rating, but still being, I think, not too graphic, really. But it's the way the style of Terence Frisian certainly gives quite a graphic appearance, you know. And we've even got, as usual, the sexuality in particular, like even a hint of lesbianism between the um, two leading ladies at one point. Um, it's it's all underlying there, but the most interesting thing is Dracula doesn't say no. <laughs> he hardly says no. Um, I think Christopher Lee wasn't too pleased about that. Um, and that's why I think if you start to look at when he, they come back and do more, he actually starts to get a little bit more dialogue. <laughs> so... That's quite interesting. Um, so uh, the screenplay is by John Sanson. And of course they looked at the story and how were they going to resurrect Dracula from the last film? And um, again, they came up with some great ideas because w when the film starts, you you um, get a flashback um, of the final scenes of the Dracula film with Peter Cushion, which is his only appearance in this film. Um, and he's, um, it's the fight where he destroys um, Dracula. And you'd think that was the end, but of course in all these films, we know it's never the end, <laughs> never the end. Anyway, let me just quickly go through class. As I said, no Peter Cushion in this film. Um, Christopher Lee back as Dracula. Then we've got, 
Francis Matthews playing the real lead character, uh, the good guy, the English guy, of course. Yes, uh, the English guy, Charles Kent, he played. Francis Matthews, I always think, oh, great voice over Captain Scarlet. Yes, say no more, all that. But he played, he's a good, a good, solid actor. Uh, definitely of this period. Then the other, I think, notable actor in this is um, Andrew Keir playing Father Sandor. Now, he's quite a leading character in this film. And, of course, we know Andrew Keir because he's going to play as Professor Quatermast. So that's all to come. And what an actor he was. Then we've got um, this... Clove character. It's played by um, Philip uh, Lantham. Lantham, yeah. Now he plays Clove. Clove. Uh, th there's always these characters that quite. He's quite good in it because he's really sinister. But they always help and serve the master. Yes, we always get that. Two leading ladies. We've got Barbara Shelley playing Helen Kent. And then we've got Susan Farmer playing Diane Kent. Kent seems to be the name. Yes, a good, solid English name. Eh? Yes, yes. Because they're four English tourists. <laughs> um, it's quite funny, really. You know, like English tourists roaming around Europe, exploring Europe. You can't beat it in these gothic 19th century settings. And then... Um, We've got Charles Tingwa, Ting, Tingnall playing Alan Kent. And then we've got another interesting character. Now, Ludwig is like Clove, a servant of um, Dracula. Um, they just help. It's it, it all, in a way, it's a throwback to the original uh, novel. Um and that's played by the wonderful Thorley Walters. It's a lovely role for him. Um, so they're, they're, they're some of the main actors. And of course, when it starts, it, it's, this film has all the usual wonderful, almost comfortable things that we expect from a Hammer film. We've got, you know, the coaches, you know, with the coach drivers and the woman of our, you know, the forest, the castle that no one says, keep away from, you must not go there, you mustn't go to the castle. Then you've got the, you always have the inn, don't you? You've got to have the inn. We get we get that, yes. Uh, we get all that. Um, it's all beautifully done and set out as the story develops. And uh, actually, for quite a little while, you're wondering... How is Dracula going to appear? Because, well, we saw the end of the film and it it, it teases things. And then, of course, we realise that, uh, that Dracula can be resurrected by his faithful servant, Clove. And that's exactly what happens. And that scene where uh, Dracula is resurrected is just amazing. Absolutely. It's, it's just a wonderful scene. Um, the special effects of, of the body. I mean, this is Terence Fisher again, showing his direction, how he creates this. You know, I mean, this, the wonderful CGI special effects nowadays, you know, I... I honestly will say this, that I love this. You can't, you know, nowadays they would do it, but this is just the creativity. Again, the whole atmosphere of these films is always there. And the scene is quite shocking as well. You know, um, the way the blood pours down, he cuts his throat. I mean, this would have had, the censors must have been really worried about um, this scene. Um, but it's cleverly done again. It looks graphic, but it isn't as graphic as you think it is. But yet it's effective and you know exactly what's going on. It's same as when um, we get one of the steak scenes. It's quite shocking as well. Barbara Shelley gets it. Uh, yes. 
a stake right through her. And that is um, interesting. I always love it as well, I have to say this. The monks, you know, it's a great tradition in a way. It's a very English tradition about monks, you know. The, going back like with Friar Tuck and Robin Hood, our monks end up being, you know, wonderful fighting people. And this um, Father Sandor uh, character play, as they played brilliantly by Andrew Keir, is just... It's just wonderful. I, I'm, I I love this theme about these monks. It reminds me of all sorts of things. I think one of my favourite films with these monks, where you get all monks, not just this one, is um, the third in the Omen trilogy. Where you get them all jumping out. And I don't know, there's something quite quite interesting about monks, you know, doing this. Um, it's, it's really interesting. Anyway, it's just me going off again. But, um, yeah, so... Um, this film, looking at it as a whole, um, is very, very enjoyable. And it was a big success. Um, I mean, it was on a budget of 100000 or around about that. And overall, it's made, well, $2.345 million. Wow. Now that is good. And really, this brought Hammer back. You know, after some of the problems that uh, had been going on, probably since the Curse of the Werewolf film, um, it, these problems had been and were quite clear. But Hammer now was back, and it was what the public loved this style. Um, I mean, I think when I look at this, um, I still think possibly the first film is perhaps. I don't know better, but this is still so entertaining and I do love it and I can see why. But of course, the double bill, I think, you know, you've got the plague of a zombies film with it. And, you know, I mean, that must have... I mean, imagine seeing these two films together. Fantastic. Well, I mean, how entertaining could it have been to go to the cinema and see these two films together? Wow. Well, I don't know. But this is the, a real entertaining, solid Hammer film. And, you know, I can't detract from it. The music, as we know in the score, is very similar as well, which is, um, I think, good. It, it's not uh, an intrusive score of music, really. You don't notice it as much, maybe. But it's there and adding to the sort of drama of it. Um I mean, everybody performs well, the actors. You can't really f um, criticise them. Um, and I think the only... I can see why Christopher Lee was virtually saying, well, I'm, I don't like this. I'm not saying no. You know, and why he probably was reluctant to do Dracula again. You know, I can understand that from this film. Um, but, you know, he helped Hammer get back to where they should be and got things going. And we get going then through some more brilliant films to come. Um, so, I mean, this, of course, were the other two films were the Rasputin film starring Christopher Lee and uh, The Reptile, which is another brilliant film. I mean... What a great set of four films these were to bring a uh, hammer back, and it did. It did. It was, it was wonderful seeing Hammer doing this, and it always impresses me so much. And you know, uh, if you've never seen this, you will enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, all Hammer films. I, I keep saying it. And I say it every week. I always find them all still enjoyable. That they're, they're just part of me. Even the ones that I know people don't like as much, I tend to like as well. You know, uh, I can think of a few where people say, hey, but this is such a, just, it represents everything I love about Hammer. And uh, it's a real comeback and it's important in the history. I always look at the history, as I say, and yeah, this is that. Now, just a quick word about this. This is Studio Canal. 2012 restoration um, and um, what a job they've done 
Um, there's some nice little extras. Um, I know, in, I think in 2018, Shout Factory did a, a restoration as well of this, um, a release. Um, but um, I think, oh, would it be Scream Factory? I think it would probably be called Scream Factory, yeah. These, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, well, I don't know. That's, I think that's 2018. Anyhow, this has got an excellent documentary on it. Really good. And also there's about the restoration. And I always enjoy looking at that side as well. Trailers. Everything you want. And for a, hey, you slipcover lovers. It's a slipcover. And there's the, um, yeah, it's the same. Same one back there. Um, it's, I don't need to show you inside there, but it's the, ooh, Two discs, there's a DVD in there as well, um, which is excellent. Yeah, always excellent. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. That's that's my review. And there's more Hammer to come. Don't worry. I'm not going away yet with it. <laughs> so if you're interested in this video, please subscribe. And we'll let you know we will when I put them out. And then... Also, if you like it, give it a like so it gets people noticed. It said in the algorithm, so more people can enjoy. And it costs note. It does. It costs absolutely note. You can't say fairer than that, can they? Hey, bye, heck. So all I've got to say is, I'll see thee, and I'll see thee again. <laughs>